So I wanted to talk about the role uh, of Maureen in Personal Shopper. I love that movie. It's like SIS is such an incredible director and it looks like you guys worked quite uh, quite together in so many ways. Um, and But one of the things I want to ask you before about talking about that collaboration is I've uh, the role of Maureen that you've said that you didn't really approach her from the, like think about what she was, um, you know, think more of her backstory. Um, beyond what's in the script. Was that like an unusual choice for you? Can you talk about how, like why you chose with that particular character? Yeah, I felt like she couldn't really remember. Right. Um, she's dealing with like such uh, devastating loss. Um, she's a twin in the movie um, and it's a smaller detail that's really only mentioned like once, I mean, we talk about my brother all the time, but they were twins, and so I just, I've never, obviously, I'm, I'm, not, I've never been, a I'm not a twin, but uh, I, I think that there's almost like she lost half of herself when he died, and, and the displaced kind of reeling feeling uh, that she's having in this, and the sort of searching that she's doing is because she just completely lost herself. It was just suddenly she was at sea and uh, so it didn't really matter who she was before. It didn't matter to me at all. I mean, like um, there are, are, I think there are shreds, little indications that she's interested in art. You know, she has a fashion job. I don't know, I think, but I it really, I think, um, yeah. I think I've said it. I, it just yeah. sort of didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that makes a lot of sense. That, that really, really fits in with the character. Also, um, I think her life was fairly normal before. Do you know what I mean? I think I, it, like whether or not I apply details, fine. Like it's like, you know, she, maybe she went to school. Maybe she didn't, doesn't matter. Maybe she went to, you know, you know yeah. But. Yeah, I love the ghostly elements in the film that are not truly supernatural. Um, and yeah, just the fact that she's a medium, I, you know, that that medium piece that was so interesting as well, yeah. I know, it's so weird, especially in the beginning, like the way she's so, um, you know, she really proclaims that as well. It's like, well, I'm a medium. It's like, that's a fact? Like that, what are you talking about? I also think that it's something that her brother really recognized in her and had more of. And so I think that she's kind of stealing from him a little bit. Yeah, the melding of the, the personalities and yeah. identity. Yeah. So, it's so weird to talk about a movie that I did like so long ago. I haven't like talked about this in so long. It's just trippy. Um, yeah, you, you know, and we all, and Sils Maria, that was also another one that you worked with, with SIS as well. And, you know, he talks about you, um, you know, direct, uh, directing the film from the inside and, you know, having that that kind of collaboration, like a lot, it sounds like that was a very freeing collaboration. Yeah, it's so crazy what he's able to do. I I can't, in a in a intelligent, articulate way, describe how he infuses himself into everything he does, but really wordlessly. Like his scripts are very concisely drawn. Um, Siri, I am not talking to you. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, we didn't have many, you know, involved conversations about what these movies meant. Um, I think that he's so interested and so excited by hearing his words come out of someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and like, for whatever reason, we just intrinsically our sensibilities match. We're both kind of weird, like wallflowery freaks that also oddly just want to be revealed. And he's just so curious and he's so unbelievably intelligent that I, I, uh, I felt so unlocked by him and like just so visible. Yeah, we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about Spencer shortly, but before we uh, before we go there, I did um, I love Pablo Lorraine's work. I think he's a fantastic filmmaker, and he said it was, was your performance in Personal Shopper uh, that led to being cast in Spencer. Um, yeah, how did you connect? How did how did you find like how did you connect with uh, with Pablo? Um, via iPhone, I um. He called me on the phone and uh, 
uh, at first I hadn't read the script yet and he was like, you know, proposed this idea and, and said that he was doing a sort of weird, uh, like tone poem essentially about mm -hmm. Diana and um, asked whether or not I would be interested in, in tackling the subject at all before he sent the script. And kind of without thinking very irresponsibly, I said, um, yes, absolutely. But in the way that I, what I mean is like, you know, I, I think my favorite kind of movies are explorations and cultivating this like controlled chaos is absolutely how you make these discoveries that are worth photographing. Um, but it's also something, you know, when you take a movie, you have to say like, trust me, I know I can do this, like, give me the job. And I did not have that for this, obviously. This was, um, I, you know, I just didn't, I could have totally fucked it up. Uh, and in the moment right before I was gonna say like, you know, kind of in a word, yes or no, uh, I was like, who are you if you don't say yes? Um, just a pussy. <laughs> And uh, I didn't want to be that. And I also, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I, I, um, I've always gotten the impression from this woman that she, you know, she just comes out to hear. She um, is such a live wire and somebody who is, you know, she has this incredibly disarming, casual, contagious, beautiful, empathetic, warm energy that reaches out. But at the same time, you always feel like there's something wrong. Like she's protecting something. And anything I ever saw of her felt like, uh, and this is after I said yes already, but it's just that she feels like you never know what's gonna happen. Like she walks into the room and the earth starts shaking. And uh, so I knew that, you know, there was no way to play this part perfectly. And therefore it was actually easier um, or at least easier to not be so intimidated and so daunted because the only way to capture something fucking wild is to to be that and I could only be my version of that and kind of hope that if I learned everything I could learn about her mm -hmm. and, and absorb her and then kind of meld and, and kind of be both me and her in some weird way that it was going to be the best version and for some reason Pablo was like I think you can do this and I was like well you're pretty smart I here we go <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So, I, yeah, we're going to show some clips of some of the performances. I think it's really interesting. We'll start with the personal shopper one, which is um, interestingly, you know, when Pablo saw, you know, when he speaks about you in the film, it's those silences that, that are captured and how that is where cinema begins, which I think is so fascinating. Um, so I love how he talks about movies so much, especially in his accent. You're just like, <laughs> like he, yeah, me too. I mean, I've I've seen all his films. I from Tony, you know, from Tony Manero onwards, and yeah. yeah, I think he's a he's an incredible filmmaker and so prolific. He does one type of film and then a completely different type of film. So it's uh, I think it's a great collaboration. Yeah, there's a whole range in in this very like very quiet moment uh, that I think is great. Uh, yeah, that I just appreciate so much. Um, it's just, it's just very trippy watching that. I haven't seen that in years. And also that person was like, so locked. It's like, so st stunt. Yeah. It's just, I just remember being there and feeling like this person's voice was like so hard to get out. I, every single one was like, <laughs> it's like strangled. <laughs> Yeah. No, and it's interesting because when we, yeah, when we see the clip of, of Spencer, like there's so, there's such a range there that we get to see. Um, so speak, yeah, it's just speaking a bit about uh, Diana, uh, late Lady Diana, uh, Princess Diana. Did you have like a strong perception of her before like you, you started the role or like was this, uh, was this uh, like, you know, what change like reading about her i mean i know you've done a lot of research uh, a lot of uh of books have been written about her obviously the way you approach it is uh, you know a very deep like you know going into a psychological study almost but um but yeah from the beginning to like can you tell us a little bit about that that difference how you went into the project and what you discovered about uh lady diana um yeah, no, I mean, I, my my whole 
relationship with the royal family, like as as a sort of entity and her um, being sort of markedly detached from that, obviously. Like I was, you know, I was really young when she died. And yeah. so, yeah, I always knew that she was diff, you know, different, but I, I didn't, I didn't know much about anything. And um, um, I mean, my, my initial feelings about her was that she was incredibly attractive, like cool. She just seemed like a lovely person. I know it sounds like basic, but um, in, I don't know. She to me feels like uh, such an odd mixture of things that don't necessarily go together at all that are, are confusing and disparate. And um, I think that's why every, I mean, that's why it, made for such a compelling story, not just the movie, but just in life. Um, you know, she's somebody who reaches out and and I think feels, I think that you feel her craving nature so palpably. She just wants to touch you mm -hmm. and she wants to be touched and she wants to feel connected and, and accompanied and um, yet she's the most isolated and difficult to relate to person like no, no, nobody could know what it what it felt like to to have that level of well to have that job and and to have those relationships that we think we know and um you know do know a lot about but can't know it from the inside um no one can except for the people that really lived it and um yeah i think the strongest the strongest impressions that i ever got of her uh were as a mother um it was kind of the only thing in her life that felt sure sure um she wanted to feel unconditional about something. I mean, it just, I think that her strength and her power and kind of her like feral, um, unstoppable kind of force of nature really, really came out when she was with her kids because she wasn't very, very good at protecting herself, but she was very, very good at protecting them. And that's just as an outsider looking in, I, mm -hmm. I can feel it. Um, and that I, I really wanted to protect and was uh, a scarier aspect of making the movie because if you don't get that right, you do not get her right. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like this weird mix of like hunger and starvation and then also extreme indulgence. Like it's like, you know, she's somebody who to me in interviews feels exceptionally manipulative, but like she's been backed into a corner and like she's baring her teeth and but then also opening herself up completely and, and and she's so revealing and she's so vulnerable. She's so she wears her heart on her sleeve like no other. Like I just feel like she can't hide anything. But yet we don't know anything about her. It just she's somebody that you really like lean in towards. And um I mean that's yeah, whatever, something she was talented at, born with. Um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's why the script is so fascinating, right? It's not like um it's like a, you know, almost like a fairy tale in reverse. It's uh, there's a lot of like surreal you know moments in the in the in in, in the film. Um, did that yeah, yeah? Did that appeal like that approach? I guess that made it easier to to not really focus on on you know, the, the facts that nobody has. Um, yeah. What did did that way of telling the story like? How did you find that appealing? Uh, the sort of like subjective, like trippy kind of internal yeah. nature of it. Yeah, and also yeah. like like the you know going into like this uh, you know fairy tale, like negative fairy tale kind of story, oh, right. right? And like ghosts appearing from the past. And mm. yeah, it feels like we're kind of able to tell like more than just her story. Sort mm -hmm. of just it's like steeped in oppression, you know. Um, yeah, the, the Anne Boleyn of it all is is uh, kind of an interesting way of showing that things have been going kind of the same way for a very, very long time. And breaking the cycle is beyond just her and her immediate family, but it's, you know, it's a historical liberation um, and something that is for her like a legacy. It's not, you know, she, I think she had a really a really powerful and impactful thing to say with that large decision that, that she made. And I, and I, I'm, it's, you know, um, 
courageous and 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 obviously like uh, self-sacrificing in a way that I think is so uh, hard. Like I can't even imagine. It fucking would suck. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I love also that the movie is. Definitely not, I mean, maybe I've said this, I've kind of done a few interviews today, I hope I'm not repeating myself, but, um, sh you know, it's it's like, we can imagine and dream and sort of write poetry about how she makes us feel and trying to get closer to her and how she felt. I think that she provides this incredibly lush and, 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 and complicated terrain to, make art about um she's somebody who is so inspiring and like changed the world yeah. and uh i've been asked a lot about um you know whether or not it's cool to try and tell someone's story when they're not around and <clears throat> somebody who was already so sort of in invaded and taken from and i think that because we really don't profess to know anything or present any new information her whole sort of life force mission statement thing was we need to come together and, um, and like find connection. And so the fact that she has inspired so much of that still, the fact that we are still cannot stop talk, we can't stop talking about her. Um, mm -hmm. My hope is that because we made it so personal, you know, just that we, whatever, we're not traipsing on any sort of, uh, I don't know, that we don't feel advantageous. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it feel it does feel very respectful. I mean, the, the parts where, where you're with the kids are so beautiful. Um, and, I, and I think that you really managed to like, you know, elicit that, that difference, that, 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 you know, total protection she had of her children. You know, so much happens in that short amount of time. I mean, there's so much communicated. Um, how did you How did you work with the kids, or how did you and Pablo work? So, because the, the scenes are really natural. There's one where you guys are playing a game that I love in, in the middle of the night in the circle. Um, yeah, because it feels really authentic. It feels very warm. There's a, such a warmth there. How did you guys yeah work together to to make that happen so naturally? Um, well, I mean, I got really lucky. I really liked them. Um, and well, not only were they incredibly smart and cool and funny and sweet, um, I don't know. They really opened, they just opened themselves up to this experience in a, in a really beautiful way that I was, I was scared about a couple things. Like obviously the, Accent is daunting, but mm -hmm. technically, if you have time, you can learn anything. Like you can, I, I, someone taught me how to do it. A really beautiful, you know, in, incredible dialect coach who really is more than that, and an artist, and another set of eyes, and whatever. Like I was like, okay, so the accent's gonna be kind of a bitch, but like, I can do it. I can't make the kids have like me. <laughs> they just have to do it, and so uh, I can't control them. I can control pretty much everything else. Uh, this this was the one real wild card, but that's why it's the coolest for me. It's like the coolest part of the movie is is the three of them together, um, and we just I don't know. I think we just uh, they were great actors and they were really nice kids. I think um, there's one scene in the movie that is the candlelit scene that's uh, uh, fairly underwritten. We had a, a kind of template to work off of, but primarily we did go off book and just play this game together. And actually remarkably, these kids knew a lot. I mean, they're English, they've grown up with in this culture that is uh, very aware of the, the royal family. And um, there are certain lines that both of them threw in that were from any adult person, it would, or any adult person that was like, you know, being in a movie, trying to play a character, it would feel so on the nose, but it was so genuine from these kids, like saying like, you know, at one point Harry goes, you know, do you, you know, William, do you want to be king one day? It's like, 
do you think they actually sit around and talk about this stuff? But like, maybe they do. I, they must at some point, you know, um, I don't know. And I, it was just really cool kind of following them and kind of letting them lead the way. And uh, yeah, I guess there's kind of no better answer. I think they were just, we got very lucky. They were beautiful little guys. Yeah. No, it works. Uh, it's really, they're my favorite parts of the film. There's like, when you see that side of her, I think they're so beautiful. All right, so we are gonna be moving over to some audience questions that I'm getting here in the chat. I just have like really one that I was very curious about. I mean, because the last time you were here at TIFF was with Seberg. You're playing this, this iconic uh, actor of the French New Wave, also, like, you know, whose privacy was also um, compromised, uh, uh, you know, um, a lot. Interesting to play, um, you know, a, a, a woman in, in a woman in these in these uh, you know situations in history. Was that something that's yeah? Is that something important to you to to also discuss or portray? Um, for both of these, it's so satisfying to take uh, somebody who feels so muzzled. And give them a platform, and and have it be their very own, and something that, obviously, it's an imaginative version. But what a cool fantasy! Um, just sort of like voiceless people finding somewhere to to scream is really satisfying. And um, so yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I I think we're entering this really awesome territory right now where obviously this has been covered and it's probably been articulated in more beautiful ways than this but I think that um, I can't wait to start seeing the movies that girls are gonna make can't wait and um, yeah I mean luckily I've 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 just had uh, had certain stories brought to me that do feel like quite poignant and topical and blah 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 but yeah those two mm -hmm. primarily did feel really good to sort of um, I don't know, kind yeah. of like retroactively liberate these people. Yeah, give them a voice. I, I think, yeah, yeah I, I agree. Um, I, I too am really excited for like, you know, women filmmakers, what's coming down the pipeline. I think it's going to be very exciting. Yeah. We're going to go to some audience questions. We've got like a few, I think about eight minutes before. Um, so this one's from Ashley. She says, the way you talk about your love of film is magnetic. And it's clear that you love the process of filmmaking um, and that it's something that you're equally passionate about. Was there anything new that you discovered through working with Pablo that shifted your perception of filmmaking? Um, shooting on film. I, I've always sort of romanticized it and recognized the grain and the I've had many DPs say that they can accomplish that digitally. And maybe that's true. Maybe you could do side-by-sides and you wouldn't be able to tell, but making the movie, you, you can, because you stand at attention when you hear film rolling through a camera. And you can always hear that little um, And I think everyone kind of hops to and goes, oh my God, it's, it's now. I mean, the time is right now. And, uh, also, we shot half. We shot like a lot of the movie on sixteen too, which is fickle and you know, there's constantly hairs in the gates, and uh, there are things that you're missing and losing. But that means that what you catch is gold. Like compared to okay, let's roll for an hour and see if we can get the kid to cry. Like that's just not. It's not as magical. Um, and I guess Pablo. He just like hates a lazy person more than anything, and and um, I don't want to say hates, but like he really just has like mad contention for people that are not like workers, and sometimes you know you have to be humane and not like destroy your crew and not like take advantage of people and performers and artists and whatever. But if it's coming from the right place, you can really drive someone into the ground, and they like it. <laughs> And uh, that is my, you know, as, as somebody with ambitions to make movies, I was like, 
really, really kind of revived by and, and blown away by his commitment. And there's no other way to say it. I mean, it sounds obvious, like you need commitment to be a good director, you need to have vision, but his commitment to his vision, which was so particular and so weird, um, was, was feral and it was very cool. And uh, I feel like that's the only, those, those are the only types of people who should be making movies unless, you know, yeah. Thank you. All right, we've got a question from Alana. Uh, to what extent do you feel that your physical transformation for this role influenced your emotional experiences and helped you embody Diana's spirit? Um, well, she is much taller than me. And I think that her her struggle with food and her relationship to her own body was um, really self-diminishing. But at the same time, when she needed to like feel herself, she just felt like so powerful. Um, and so I, I, I really wanted to, um, no, that was embarrassing. <laughs> I really wanted to, um, sometimes like hold myself together when nobody else would physically. So that's a part of her story that we never wanted to fully articulate. She always said that, you know, the Royal family doesn't hug, but to say that is a little on the nose. And so there were times where I was like, just hold yourself. And um, that kind of communicated broadcast that aspect of the story. Um, physical, physical. I don't know. She's such an odd combination of things. She's uh She's got this sort of like languid, beautiful, floaty thing, but then she's also quite angular and she juts. And I don't mean that like actual specific, I, I, like kind of in a, in a, in a theoretical way. Um, yeah, and she's bracing. I just think everything about her is always like, oh, holding, 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 holding. Um, so yeah, in the moments that we could like really release her, felt incredible. Yeah, and you and you worked really closely with the the cinematographer. Um, with is it Claire uh, Mathon? Uh, yeah, Mathon. Yeah. Mathon. Okay. Um, so I heard that. The, yeah, I've I've read that Pablo said like you know you guys had a real uh, established a real close connection, um, and it's just interesting to hearing you talk before about like that ephemera of of uh, shooting on film and creating this this really vulnerable character and how you worked with the, the cinematographer to elicit a lot of that. Um, Claire is a genius. Mm -hmm. uh, like it is, she's a, a woman of very few words. And I don't think it's because I don't speak French. <laughs> I think it's because she's, she's, she's um, so watchful. She's just not thinking of, the what she's putting out when she's working she's receiving she is the most absorbent person i uh i could i could um i could get up and run across the room and she would be in front of me somehow before i got there i just couldn't understand how she did it i could do anything and i felt like she didn't miss anything i would throw these like curveballs b-ball curveballs b-ball curveballs b-ball and she would just be like bah, 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 just just so aware of like what it takes to really look at someone. And some people are very caught up in, you know, their own shit, composition and lighting and, you know, what they want you to do versus what you are going to throw at them. And, uh, and she's also just a really lovely person. And um, I think we all, me and Pablo and Claire and my, my coach, William was a really huge part of this like animal. We all felt so, so connected. And um, like, I feel, you know, I, I'm an actor and I kind of, you know, I was cast to play her, but anyone, they all could have played her. I mean, Pablo would be the best Diana. He's just not quite the right look. Um, but yeah, I just felt like we all held this thing together so equally. And that I could just, I don't know, she was, I've, I've just never been given like so much like freedom and reverence. I felt like so much love from 
all of them, Claire especially, and she doesn't say much, like I said. So it was just something I felt so accompanied by her when I was at my lowest points. Like the one difference between Diana and myself especially is that she was fucking alone and I was not. I had people holding me. And so in the moments where I really felt like I needed to go to the very lowest, I had sort of a, a safety net to do so. And I, you know, some piece, you know, when you feel bad, you put walls up and you start protecting yourself. And so what happens is you're not able to cry. You're not able to, you're not able to feel um, when you're scared and when you feel like, you know, truly actually lonely. So yeah. No, it just, it's a wonderful film, Kristen. I w really want to thank you for sharing yeah, with us today. Very much looking forward uh, yeah, to, it's going to show for the first time tonight in Toronto. Um, okay. So it's the first screening is, is this evening. And looking forward to your, your, yeah, your other films, you directing. I think this is very exciting. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you very, very, very much.